tell me part two. Okay, tell part me part two. two. We come back in September, and at the beginning of the year, all kinds of strange things begin to happen. The first is that some of the priests in the outside who didn't think the council was working quickly enough decided to come here and aided and abetted by the seminarians who were looking for new things, had an experimental mass in the locker room, in the lo which is now the lower floor of the library. The locker room. That they were, was, were they wearing gym shorts for mass? I mean, who what? knows what they did? We were down there. We didn't know what went on up here. So you have to remember that what is, what is now Ryan Memorial Library was only Ryan Memorial Library for half of the top floor. You had cycle room, auditorium, everything else. The bottom floor was the ath athletic department. You had the gym, the track, the, old, courts. the old swimming pool, and everything. So they cleared debris out of the locker room and proceeded to celebrate an experimental mass using, and of course the, the rumors have come all over the years, Hoagie Rolls and Coca-Cola. And what were some Manischewitz. of Manischewitz wine, because that was real Jewish wine instead of the Moroni's that we were using. But it sure was an unleavened bread and and uh, Moroni's altar wine. So here's, here's an underground mass taking place in the locker room of St. Charles. Okay. Word gets out. And I think Kroll finally had it. And so he comes out on the last Thursday of September. And we were celebrating something called Fifth Year Week. You weren't here. You'd be, were you, were you still here? I was in sixth year. Okay. The time. Fifth year, well, you were in the upper side. Mm -hmm. Th that they divided the classes differently than they do now. So everybody was kind of depressed. You know, like, oh, we forgot the turkey shoot. In June, because we had criticized the academics, the faculty decided to have a meeting and they dismissed 25 of the students, approximately. So the turkey shoot's about dismissals, not about live turkeys. Yeah, that's exact. And the way it was done, you would go to concourses in the college auditorium, proceed to the chapel to sing the Te Deum as quickly and as loudly as you could because it meant you had three months off. And then you would proceed in double line file. We marched like West Point here through the center of the house. And they threw out so many that it required the two deans to be pulling people out of line, including him, but not for being thrown out. And you were to pack your bags and leave your gone. So having 25 of your cohorts dismissed and other people just leaving on their own, we were the highest ranking class in the lower, lower buildings. Now, just to clarify, were they dismissed because of involvement in that mass or just? No, academics. No. Academics. No. This, this is June. The mass isn't until September. But it's all academic because we had criticized the faculty and how poor the academics were. So they were going to show us how academic they were by throwing us out. So we come out, we decided to have something called Fifth Year Week. Now, we were the most unathletic class probably in the history of Overbrook. We couldn't play any sports whatsoever. So we challenged the house to, to like a volleyball game, a softball game. Of course, we were defeated in every one. So we think this would make everybody happy. And then somebody announces, Fifth Year Week has decided to have a special guest speaker. Guess who came the Thursday night of Fifth Year Week? John Cardinal Crawl again. And once again, he got up there and he told us that he heard that we wanted to dialogue with him. That was, and he told us that if he had said the word dialogue to his father, he would have washed his mouth out with soap. So he was not very happy with the word dialogue. But then he just declared that he was cleaning house. He appointed a new rector, a first vice rector ever, a new spiritual director, a new financial director, Monsignor Bruder for the, he basically redid the seminary administration in one day. And that next Tuesday, they came. And the rector was then Monsignor, later Bishop Thomas Welsh, the founding Bishop of Arlington and second Bishop of Allentown. Well, Welsh compared to his predecessor at the time was a 
breath, breath air, he announced that we were allowed now to have radios in our rooms if we want transistor radios. We couldn't have radios, televisions, newspapers, any of that stuff. We were allowed the standard in times. Wasn't that nice? Did that count as a newspaper or as an exception? That, that was an exception. So he, it looks like that this place is you know, starting to get going now. And then he decides, for some reason, just to take a walk one fine night, and he discovers theologians in his office. Now, his office is now the room that leads into where the organ is. Those little conference rooms that are there. The that formation was, That was one huge room with filing cabinets. So there they are, rifling the filing cabinets, looking up their records to see what's going on. Then he discovers, when he goes down to the faculty meeting room, that there are hidden tape recorders there. They have been tape recording faculty meetings so the guys could find out what the faculty was saying about the individual students. Were any of them yours? No, not that I know of. So this is part two, and th this is where it, it gets bad. The, the first part was asked for. The second part involved, you know, if they had been in the outside world, they would have been arrested you know, for burglary and, and other such crimes, wiretapping. We were Nixon before there was Nixon. You know, they, they had wiretaps and, and all that in the rooms. So that was the completion of the white paper. And the, the second part really was an act of disobedience. The first part was not. Did I miss anything? No, I did. You covered it well, but it, that that was not a was not a happy time at all. Were you here for the uh, clown mass or the experimental mass or yeah, I was in I was in sixth year. I was would have been our class's first year up here because the last year of the college came up here because there were so many. And who, were the, who, who, was, who was sharing the, uh, the rumors about the mass? Was it just coming from other students or from outside priests? Oh, no, it would have come, would have come from other students. It was an inside, yeah. it was an inside thing. The, uh, but they invited liberal priests to come to be the, Even they knew they couldn't celebrate mass yet. So they invited uh, disaffected priests, shall we say? Sure. And they came out and they wanted to see the church change, and so they were participating with the seminarians doing it. Then now the next year, we became the first class when they restructured the academics, because now they had a vice rector for the first time ever. There was there was no academic dean or anything back then. The, 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 the dean of men did everything. It was the disciplinarian, the house nurse, the the, the academic guy the disciplinary, you name it, he was all things wrapped up into one. So he was a vice rector without the title. Yeah. So did he get COVID flu shots and stuff like that? Not and back then. No, but just chest x-rays. When they restructured the place and now we became a college, they eliminated the two high school years, which meant we were now eight years and not 10. And so the balance always was five and five. Well, now we had three and five. And so they moved fourth college from up here to down there. So he was the last fourth college class up here. We were the first down there. And we got the news from the dean who told us we have good news and bad news. The good news is we're going to give you a semester break, which lasted from after the apostolate on a Thursday night until Saturday night. That was the semester break, 48 hours. And the bad news is we were spending an extra year down there instead of being able to come up here, whereas you might gather it was a little more free.